Good evening, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 27th, 2019, recorded on 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we still are looking at Tropical Depression 6 and Tropical Storm Dorian. We really won't touch on Tropical Depression 6 much as this will continue to head on out to sea here over the next few days, only bringing some rip currents to the United States' uh, eastern coast and possibly some wind impacts and rain impacts to the Canadian Maritimes. We'll mainly be focusing on Tropical Storm Dorian. Speaking of Dorian, Dorian has actually weakened a tad bit after crossing Saint, the uh, St. Lucian Islands this morning. Uh, maximum sustained winds now at 50 miles an hour, moving west-northwest at 13. And uh, the center has actually reformed uh, after crossing the St. Lucian Islands this morning here, after crossing the island chain. The center actually went from right about here to now more f uh, further to the north. Uh, on this track, this actually will bring it across the southwestern part of Puerto Rico and then continuing on into the Bahamas where eventually uh, we could see restrengthening possibly significantly uh, in the Bahamas. We'll touch that here in just a moment. Uh, looking at the IR presentation loop, uh, Dorian has actually had a well-established outflow pattern throughout the day. You can see well-established traverse uh, outflow on pretty much almost every quadrant uh, here. Very traverse outflow preventing a lot of the shear uh, to really impact the system. The main impact is still very dry air and you can see on the satellite, the uh, IR presentation loop here, uh, you can see we've actually had a recent deep convective burst right over the center of circulation uh, right in here. And this will continue to head off uh, towards the west-northwest here over the next few days, impacting the southwestern portion of uh, Puerto Rico here. Uh, all of Puerto Rico currently is under a uh, tropical storm warning and, tro and, excuse me, and a hurricane watch. With tropical storm warnings and hurricane watches for portions of the Eastern Dominican Republic and tropical storm watches for the Northern and the Southern part of the Dominican Republic as well. Uh, speaking of the intensity forecast, Dorian is expected to uh, strengthen slowly here over the next coming uh, few hours and uh, really through about the next 24 hours or so to about 65 miles an hour indicated by the official National Hurricane Center uh, page here. Uh, eventually weakening due to the land interaction here with uh, Puerto Rico. Now, there's still some uncertainty here. There's a lot of uncertainty uh, variance here within the models. Some of the models indicate that this will pass between the Mona Passage here, which is basically like the, sh the uh, shipping lane between uh, the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Uh, some models have it passing uh, in the Mona Passage, which would actually uh, keep it stronger and allow a stronger system to strengthen more robustly out here, uh, while other models have it crossing over Puerto Rico and significantly weakening uh, dampering intensification in the longer run in the days four and five period as this gets into the Bahamas and potentially Florida. Uh, speaking of Florida, uh, the cone of uncertainty has uh, begun to increase over Florida, and you can see uh, official land uh, official landfalling point here by 2 p.m. Sunday uh, in Florida as a uh, bona fide tropical storm at about 70 miles an hour. However, again, uh, that is really within that range of significant uncertainty because uh, some of the uh, latter models have actually indicated this uh, moving. Uh, away from Florida just a little bit into portions of Georgia and even South Carolina. So if you live along Georgia and South Carolina, you're still not out of the woods yet. And uh, I would keep watching this very closely here as a, f a northern track would actually favor more strengthening and allow it more time to strengthen. So uh, we will see how this thing interacts with Puerto Rico and then eventually uh, moves into the Bahamas and where exactly it moves and how strong the ridging of high pressure is is going to be very important uh, for where this eventually wants to track into. And uh, shifting ahead now to the recon observations 
for uh, the NOAA 42 uh, aircraft plane in here. This is from uh, Levi Cowan, tropicaltidbits.com. Great guy from Florida State University. Uh, you can see the, the convective burst here uh, over portions of the islands here, uh, getting to the western islands there. Uh, and you can see the uh, it's been a little bit hard trying to actually find where the center is. Uh, I would indicate probably the center to be somewhere within this region in here. Uh, but overall, there the center would be somewhere probably on the western side of this deep convective burst. Uh, but it's still pretty good winds right now at about uh, 34 knots uh, indicated about here and pressures have actually come down here uh, a tad bit to about a thousand five millibars uh, the extra uh, the extrapolated was about a thousand five millibars in here so that's an interesting thing as um, the pressure has begun to drop actually a little bit so that's going to be a very interesting thing and to see how much uh, that will trans translate to potentially any strengthening within, excuse me, within the next 12 to 24 hours. And looking at the GFS forecast model uh, right now, this is the uh, G GFS uh, 18Z model run for uh, 0Z today. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, we are starting at the initial position here, about uh, the, the initial position about 2 o'clock. Uh, earlier today, and you can see the vorticity field uh, right here associated with Dorian. Uh, this is the uh, energy associated with Tropical Depression 6, and that will continue to move off towards the north into the east, allowing a stronger ridge to build back in here. We'll actually use blue. Use a stronger ridge to build back in and eventually force Dorian, or what is ever left of Dorian after crossing uh, through Puerto Rico, uh, allow that to shift further west. So somewhere within this region we expect Dorian to be uh, by days four and five, but exactly where and exactly how strong it is is still very uncertain. If we move this out to about 24 hours, uh, Dorian is now making landfall according to the, uh, the GFS model. Dorian is now uh, closing, uh, closing in on landfall in Puerto Rico. And you can see the uh, associated energy with tropical depression six and you can see the overall energy package is very strong out with tropical depression six and what that's doing is pulling uh, it is influencing Dorian ever so slightly to go further and further to the north that was a bad drawing <laughs> further and further further to the north uh, which would allow this to more so cross over Puerto Rico but not so much interact with the uh, high mountain, the high mountainous area of Hispaniola and the Dominican Republic, uh, which would actually keep Dorian a little bit stronger. And as such, on the GFS by 42 hours, uh, Dorian's circulation is still largely intact here in the uh, in the guidance model, uh, suggesting that Dorian is still wrapped up enough for whatever uh, energy is left over to make it somewhere in the Bahamas. And if we switch out to 60 hours, you can see Dorian is once again starting to strengthen a uh, very nice uh, energy here associated within the 850 millibar vorticity, which is about roughly about 5,000 feet off the ground. Um, and you can see the ridge now, the height, height lines, the ridging in the atmosphere is starting to build in, which is now going to be shifting uh, Dorian more towards the west and we have started to see more and more guidance pick up on the westward sh uh, trend with this but also a stronger system. Now again exactly how strong it is is going to depend on the landfall point and exactly how it interacts with this dry air and land interaction. And as such we shifted out to 84 hours and Dorian is a strong tropical storm sitting uh, near just east of the Bahamas and moving in the general direction of Florida. And if we shift that out to 96 hours, you can see the ridging now really starting to build over top of the storm, forcing uh, Dorian more and more towards the west here. So we're going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see exactly how much land interaction Dorian uh, encounters with Puerto Rico and uh, also the potential for re-strengthening somewhere in the Bahamas. And again, how strong 
Dorian is when it crosses into the Bahamas and exactly how strong the ridge is will be very important uh, for who sees landfall. Again, landfall currently expected in Florida by Sunday afternoon. And we take that back to the official National Hurricane Center uh, page. You can see landfall expected somewhere uh, Sunday afternoon here, Labor Day weekend in uh, Florida as a bona fide tropical storm. However, uh, really the the scenarios have started to kind of spread out a little bit with anywhere from Georgia to South Carolina now potentially having to keep an eye on this. Again, we will continue to keep an eye on it and we'll be back for more tomorrow. You all have a great rest of your night. Stay safe and I'll see you again tomorrow.